In this demo, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use the um, functionality and link tools that will let you adjust an entire VE table for a change to the global fuel value in ECM Link. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to show you kind of an interesting situation that can pop up uh, that would lead you to actually need to use that. Uh, I've got a log loaded up here, and we'll just look at a couple things about it. Uh, to start with, I've got the wideband showing here and this is an E85 log. Uh, you can tell wideband's at 13.3 here so it's a little lean. And then it starts going really rich and by the end of this uh, pull here we're down around 11.1 then dropping into 10s, 10.9, 10.8 so it's getting really rich for E85. So the first assumption is, is that the VE table must be off or something's going on causing this to start running rich. But if you look closer and click the AF ratio estimate, you can see that it's actually targeting an AFR even lower than that at 10.5. And we come look at the direct access log and track the data log. You can see we're way over here. We got 10.6 selected out in here. So what's actually happening is the uh, ECU is technically lean as far as what it's trying to hit. Now the car is going extremely rich, but as far as airflow calibration goes in the VE table, it's actually lean. So what we want to do, first of all, before we can fix uh, the AFR issue, we've got to get the wideband error here down. You can see there's a pretty good amount of error. We want that flat, and we want the uh, AFR to match what the ECU is targeting. So to begin with, we'll go over here and look at the um, the e table and see what's going on and two things jump out at me here on this ve table uh, one is that these numbers over here to the right are probably high uh, the e should be dropping off out in here so these are probably high which is causing the uh, ecu to inject more fuel out here than it really should and if you go back and look at the log that would explain why here it starts richening up uh, the ve table out in here should be lower which would cause less fuel and bring this back up so that's the first thing that jumps out at me. The second thing that jumps out at me is that the entire table is somewhat low, especially down in here. Um, up around the peak VE area at maximum load, this should be closer to 100, 101, something like that. Uh, so this is somewhat low. So where do you start? Um, you could just bring the log into Link Tools, pick a couple spots here in the log and do an auto correction. Um, you know, like we're used to doing. The problem with that is that when you do that, we'll highlight these marked cells and go look at the VE table. When you do that, you're only going to be working on a very small part of the of the log. Um, you're not going to do anything with all this other area out in here, which is probably pretty far off. So, what I would actually start with on this is to do some global adjustments. So, let's go back to ECM Link and look at the fuel. If we look at the fuel and go to the calculator here. First of all, you can see there's a global fuel value of 61.3. So let's just run the calculator and see what Link tells us it should be. Uh, this car is running 2150s. We'll say it's uh, and it's right at 40 psi. If we calculate that, the global should be 69.8, but it's actually 61.3. So right out of the box, we we see here that the global fuel adjustment might not be right, which would possibly explain why the VE table has been um, adjusted the way it has overall. Uh, could be part of the problem. We don't know that for sure, but it could be part of the problem. Go back to the VE table here. So first of all, we want to get all of these numbers changed to reflect what we're going to do by changing this global fuel value. So if we go back to ECM Link, I mean, I'm sorry, go back to Link Tools. Here's our VE table. I can right click and say adjust for global fuel change. And we'll put in the original value, which was 61.3, I believe. 61.3. And if we do a calculation again here, 40 psi pressure at 9.8 for E85, we get 69.8. Uh, that seems a little high. Uh, actually, actually, you know what? I believe it's 37 psi. That's more like it, 68.6. So we're going to say that we're going to change our, our global from 61.3 to 68.6. Now that's just a rough estimate to start with. So we'll come up here and we'll put in 
the new global of 68.6. So we got the original global, the new global, and we're going to say do it and see what's going to happen. Now with this scale factor, these values are going to be really high. So you can see we scaled it. They're really high though. And what that tells me is the global was probably not as far off as the calculator says because our fuel pressure was a little different or, or whatever. So what I would do instead of just running with those numbers uh, to get a 100 value down here, we want to drop the new global value down a little bit. So let's try 66. That puts us a lot closer. Uh, it might even come down a little bit more than that. We'll try, let's try 65. Oops, minus 65. Do it. Okay, that puts us real close up here. So we're about 100% V in the peak load area, which I would expect. And obviously now at this new rescaling, it's pretty obvious now out here that these numbers are way too high. Um, v is going to be dropping quite a bit out here, uh, so you want less fuel and again when you look at the log that would make this uh, flatter so anyway what we would do here is um, we wanted to actually start working on this go to the fuel tab we would put in that minus 65 right here for the fuel and then we would also want to come over to the VE table and take the one we just adjusted copy that table and paste it into here that would give us something to start with now when you do this, you obviously want to start off very slow and easy, drive the car a little bit, watch combined fuel trims and make sure you're on the right track here. Uh, you never want to make uh, massive changes to the, the entire V table and global fuel without easing into it. But this should give us a nice place to start. Um, we can, we're closer to 100 up here where we belong. Uh, you know, so our V table's at least in the ballpark now and our global fuel should also be in the ballpark. Uh, based on the calculations. So that gets us a little closer on global, a little closer on the V table. And now we're ready to start doing some pulls. Uh, I, mean, I mean, some driving around, make sure combined FT is okay. And if that's good, then we can start doing low boost pulls and start dialing in uh, this area right here with the, the uh, Link Tools auto adjustment. So, anyway, that's a little overview of where that global fuel adjustment can come in handy and a few things to look for. In the uh, next videos we'll get into some more of the stuff you can do specifically in version 6